over to the Western Cape, where officials are giving an update on the flooding and the damage uh, in the province. Uh, let's take you there live. Flooding that took place in one of the school's basements. Um, at the school we visited this morning, uh, Minister Mania and myself visited Franschhoek High School, uh, where we saw firsthand the damage to the main road, as well as to Aderki Ace, as well as the one closest to the school as well. Um, it's impossible um, in terms of vehicular traffic, and hence we had to travel a, a makeshift route around the back of the town uh, to be able to get to the school. Learners are still unable to, to access that school, but I'm glad to hear that uh, there are plans afoot to try and get the main road repaired, because as you're aware, we do have the winter, the, sorry, the spring school program starting next week, particularly for our grade 12 learners, uh, as we prepare for the final examination. Our learner absenteeism has decreased uh, or increased, sorry, somewhat. We are now at 31% learner absenteeism today in our schools. Um, it is also the last week of the school term where we do uh, normally see a slight increase in learner absenteeism, but uh, largely also because of the 21 schools that are still closed uh, within, within the province. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll uh, now cross over to our colleagues at uh, Social Development. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Premier and Ministers and uh, Chairperson. The Department of Social Development is continuing with uh, its humanitarian support uh, in partnership with the NGOs. Uh, primarily, the South African Red Cross Society is continuing to assist and also avail premises in Weinberg, Grayton, Hermanus and Neisner for donation drop-offs. Uh, in addition to that uh, gift of the givers, uh, the Asherful Aid International and Al Imdad Foundation have started assisting as well. The department uh, has been working together with SASA and municipalities to conduct assessments and uh, the SASA has begun to provide aid as well in affected areas. The donations that are being requested by the NGOs at the moment include blankets, water, dry and non-perishable food, baby food and toiletries and dignity packs. Uh, and the distribution of that has uh, been underway already. Uh, just the Department of Social Development's local social workers in the Overberg are also working together with the municipalities to to do outreach work uh, to families where assistance is needed, uh, including the provision of emergency baby packs, uh, blankets, diapers and formula, and uh, also providing uh, trauma support to families that have suffered loss. The Department of Social Development's local offices are all still open and uh, trauma counselling and other social development services are available at these offices. And uh, the uh, social workers in the uh, the wine, uh, Winelands region are also now uh, doing assessments in Overberg and in the areas of uh, the Durans and uh, in the areas of uh, Ashton and Grayton where people are affected. So uh, there's still uh, work underway to determine the full extent of the need, um, but the, the assessments are underway via the provincial uh, jo joint operations centers in the districts. And then also uh, we, we are providing the addresses of those uh, SA Red Cross Society drop-off points for donations. And there will be um, further information provided on uh, as additional NGO partners and organizations uh, join the assistance drive uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, HOD McDonald, for that update. Uh, we had several questions yesterday coming through on the impact on our agriculture sector. So uh, we have our colleagues from the Western Cape Department of Agriculture, uh, Ms. Ashia Peterson, who can give us an update on the impact on that sector. A very a warm welcome to you. Good afternoon, Premier, Ministers, HODs, um, all protocol observe. So um, just from our initial assessment, and I need to emphasize that the assessment is a very early initial assessment of the flood damage in agriculture. Um, this is just some of the pictures to demonstrate the, the water, the extent of um, which agricultural area has been covered in water. Um, can we go to the next slide? 
Um, this is the Cape Winelands, and this is the area that had been impacted in terms of agriculture most. Um, then I need to also say that from our preliminary um, uh, assessment, at this stage for Cape Winelands, we had only 80% um, of farmers we weren't able to contact because some of them are not on their farms yet. Um, others are, are not um, contactable because the network is not working, they're without electricity. So really emphasizing that these are initial numbers. Then at the same time um, in Overberg, we've assessed about 50% of the farmers um, that we were able to get information from. The information was um, obtained via farmer, local farmer organizations, organized agriculture in the districts, water user association, irrigation boards, catchment management agency, um, and from farmers directly. Um, can we go to the next slide? And this is our very early initial estimates um, of agricultural damage. At this stage is about 1.4 billion. Um, the area impacted most is Cape Winelands, like I've indicated. Um, at this stage, with only having um, assessed about 20% of the um, farms, the infrastructure damage is already on 250 million crop losses, um, which includes mostly citrus, vineyards, uh, table grapes, um, is amounts to 150 um, million. Um, we haven't included uh, losses in terms of labor. We haven't been able to assess also the impact of agri-workers in terms of their need, in terms of social needs. So soil losses and soil losses are defined as those um, soil that is washed away on the river banks and deposited downstream. It's also when um, soil from the vineyards and orchards are washed away as a result of the rivers breaking their banks. Um, and it's natural felt that is just washed away. It's earthen canals that is washed away due to the floods um, and water. So for Cape Winelands, that's 400 million. And the total cost at this stage for Cape Winelands in terms of flood losses is estimated at 800 million. The Central Karoo, they've had some rain. Um, one of the, uh, the Buffalo's Refere was in flood. Fortunately, it had um, river protection works that stabilizes the river banks. And as a result, that river didn't break its banks. Um, garden root, um, minimal uh, damage, but still damage in that area in terms of infrastructure, it is 7 million. Crop losses, which is mainly vegetables and grains, 25 million. Um, soy losses, 50 million, and a total um, loss of 82 million. For Overberg, um, infrastructure losses, 130 million crop losses, which is mainly livestock, and grains, um, which is wheat at the moment, our canola, and farmers are due to harvest in the next week or two. So the challenge of whether the felt um, or areas would be ready for harvesting is a major challenge. And there's definitely going to be a loss in um, a harvest uh, crop um, harvested and potential in some areas a total loss of the the crop. Soil losses is 360 million, which for Overberg a total of 520. In the west coast, there has been, although um, no floods has taken place, the early warnings had gone gone out as a result of the Tierwaterskloof um, dam. Uh, uh, water releases as well as the Berg River Dam releases. So that area, we're expecting that um, that area might be, low-lying areas would be threatened. 
and then the air day of Clan William Dam that has also been released, water has been released. So um, the, below the olefines, olefines, below the Clan William Dam, the low lying areas are also under threat. Um, we would be, if any damages, the reports would come through this evening or this tomorrow morning. Can we go to, so estimated damage is 1.4 billion. Just going forward uh, in terms of the process that the department will follow, um, with the, this morning we've deployed a mobile app and we've seen that in app on to organize agriculture, our disastrous um, database and all our stakeholders um, in the districts that we have numbers for, that allows for farmers to give us an indication of the to what extent they were impacted, infrastructure loss, whether there's job losses, whether there's agri-workers that require assistance, and that information is immediately uploaded and we get immediately information around that. Um, as I said, one of the challenges, some of the mobile networks are still down and not we might not be able to get information from all our farmers. Um, and then we looking at a first uh, draft report available based on the mobile data that we received by the 5th of October. And then once water is rescinded, the district will be able to perform a rapid assessment. And that is basically going out and um, visiting the various um, farms and engaging with the farms. And that will give us a far better estimate of the extent of the damage and that draft report will be available on the 15th of October. We then have a verification to verify the information that we've um, collected and that information should be of um, that assessment where we verify the initial assessment that we've received should be available by the 20th, will be completed between the 23rd and the 27th of October. We at this, at that stage will be have more updated information and as we're receiving information um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it will our information will be updated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asha, for that. Um, I'll now open the floor to questions from the media. If I could just remind you, please, to identify which media outlet and house you uh, represent. Um, and also, if you could just indicate who your question is directed towards. Um, if I could, again, just remind you, if you could keep those questions to one per, per person, uh, per session, and then we can take it from there just for ease of reference and to make it a little easier. So I'll open those questions. You can uh, ask them verbally by raising your hand. You can put them in the uh, chat box as well, or you can also WhatsApp them to me for those who have my WhatsApp details or my, my cell phone details, you can do that. So we'll open the, um, the floor to questions at this stage if there are any forthcoming. A question has just been WhatsApp to me, and it's specifically for um, for Asha from Agriculture. Uh, Asha, I think if you could just uh, repeat when you expect um, all the final assessments uh, to have been completed and what the process is after these assessments are done. If you could maybe just give us a little more detail and just remind us uh, when you expect those assessments to be done. We can start with that question. Thank you. Thank you. Assessments um, in terms would start by as soon as water is rescinded. So we will basically go out in field by next week. Um, the all areas that we're able to access that is being um, evaluated. Um, that will be a rapid assessment and that report would be available the 15th of October. The final report would basically be available by the end of November of October. And with that estimates, we would be able um, would then um, draft a submission uh, to cabinet um, in collaboration with a disaster, a provincial disaster management center and Department of Local Government. 
um, submit to cabinet declaring a natural disaster. Um, and then, of course, via PDMC requests um, the National Disaster Management Center to declare, uh, to classify a disaster. And in that way, um, we'd be able to request for national funding in collaboration with uh, fund, provincial funding re, being reprioritized, as well as departmental um, funding being reprioritized. Thank you. Thank you, Asha. Uh, News 24 has sent us three questions, not just one, but uh, there are pertinent questions. So we'll start with uh, the first one, um, and I think it would be probably directed towards our colleagues at the Provincial Disaster Management Centre. Um, any details on fatalities at this stage? And then for MEC uh, Bridal, could you please clarify your request to the President for the SANDF? And then um, just uh, a question here on uh, the difference distinguishing between uh, what the city of Cape Town has done, uh, declaring a major incident, um, how is this different to uh, a, a, a broader state of disaster? All right, um, apologies, or I apologize for the slight break up there on that uh, visual uh, for a second. We're going to try and go back there as soon as we can, just getting a sense of uh, the uh, damage uh, as a result of all that flooding uh, in the West. And Cape preliminary reports coming out uh, showing that the uh, total cost for the flooding as far as the agriculture sector uh, is concerned is estimated to be 1.4 billion rand. Uh, and that's just the initial assessments. Obviously, they're waiting for the water to recede. And then the Department of Agriculture is going to do an in-depth investigation. Uh, we were